Hello, everybody. It's your host, QED20, as usual. Welcome to the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Vitaime do Shviata Vyjmina. So, I'm really excited to play this through once again with you guys because not only is the Witcher series my absolute favorite fantasy series, it is a series that is near and dear to my heart um, as a Polish child growing up. This is, this is a series that I, I loved. I read all the books, I, I played all the games, and The Witcher 3 is, is as close to a masterpiece as I would consider a video game, and I'm really excited to play through it again, especially since I haven't actually gone through Hearts of Stone, the new expansion pack, and because the next expansion pack, uh, excuse me, expansion pack, Blood and Wine, is coming out relatively soon. And so, I hope to take you all on a journey through everything. We're going to start from the beginning, we're going to go through everything I'm going to describe, the characters, the story, what's going on. So for people who aren't necessarily with so familiar with the Witcher universe and the franchise, could get up to speed and enjoy the newest game and what it offers without having to necessarily go through and read all the books or play the previous games. And hopefully you have an enjoyable experience. And I know that I'm in for a treat playing it yet again for a third time. Um, and so let's just get right into it. Let's do a fresh start. Um, Let's play it on Death March. Why not? Uh, and might as well play through the tutorials um, just because um, I haven't played with a keyboard yet in a while. Anyway, here's The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. You see here a Nilfgaardian soldier. You can tell by the colors that he's wearing. Nilfgaard is a region uh, to the south of Temeria, which is the, the northern kingdoms. And they uh, wear black and gold. It's their their kind of national colors, mostly black, dark colors. There we have Geralt of Rivia. Behind him, Vesemir, who is his adoptive father of sorts. Um, he was one of the original Witchers, or uh, Vjedjmin in Polish, um, who who uh, trained the newer uh, generations of Witchers. And here we have Yennefer's crow. Killing the Nilf Guardian, uh, Yennefer of Vengerberg, a famous sorceress, um, originally from Edern, which is a, I would imagine, kind of like medieval Germany because of the flag is very similar to the German flag. Um, but she's a sorceress. She's 94 years old, but sorceresses um, are stay, you know, they live for a long time. They're always beautiful. Every sorceress is beautiful, and you'll see that theme pretty consistently throughout the game with its m many sorceress characters. So we hear that, we see that Yennefer was caught in a battle between Nilfgaard in the north, um, and Geralt and Vesemir are here to follow her trail, uh, as Geralt has not seen Yennefer for a while. In fact, the first two games you only hear of Yennefer, you don't actually get to see her. Um, so this was very exciting for me, because I, apart from my imagination and interpretation of how she looked like, I, I wouldn't know. This is the first time they've actually realized her as a character. And so, and I think they did a fantastic job. And one thing that this series does, the video game series, uh, that is, is that they capture the characters and visualize the characters so well that I could not have imagined a better, um, a better visualization of all these characters. Yennefer, Geralt, um, Ciri, uh, Vesemir, all these characters, Dandelion especially, um, they are exactly who... I imagined in my head. They look how I imagined them. They talk how I imagined them to be. It's 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 wonderful, and I'm it's truly it's truly amazing to see how well CD Projekt Red has created this universe and made it tangible. Um, as a hint, or I should probably note that we were going to play through this game with Polish uh, voice acting, uh, with English subtitles on, so I can describe if there's any kind of differences between the Polish uh, story and the English translation. Maybe there's some small differences between translations that could occur that could actually take away from the story. Uh, we'll see. I've never actually played it with Polish subtitles, so that's what we're going to do. There we have Geralt peacefully sleeping with Vesemir by his side after 
the intro cinematic. And here we are in Kaer Morhen, which is a elvish for Old Seafort, I believe. No. Kaer Morhen's a really beautiful place uh, in the mountains. Um, it's the home of the School of the Wolf, which is a particular school of witchers. We'll find out that witchers are trained in different uh, schools, and School of the Wolf being this particular one, the one that Geralt was trained in, actually. And you can differentiate witchers from which school they are uh, based on the medallion that they wear. You'll see Geralt has a, a wolf medallion, and you'll find other, you'll see other witchers from different schools. Yennefer is a saucy minx. She's very feisty. I really like her as a character. I am very excited to to introduce to you Siri, also a great character, um, Geralt and Yennefer's adoptive daughter. Essentially, I'll get into her history a little bit more later. So far, the translation is pretty one to one, so I'm, there's no difference. I think it's pretty evident now that uh, Yennefer and Geralt have a thing for each other, and uh, it's interesting because Yennefer is the love of Geralt's life. Um, but they're bound together through, through uh, the. In, in one of the books, uh, I believe it was The Last Wish, which was the, one of the first books, Geralt wishes to the genie that their fates be intertwined forever, uh, rather than saying that, you know, asking for her to be always in love with him and all that kind of BS. So they've had this sort of, you know, on and off relationship, and and I, their dynamic is very interesting, and we'll see that a lot in, in the game, which is exciting. And here we have gameplay finally. Let me all let me show you. Oh, pardon. Here is Caramoran. Beautiful. Truly beautiful. Anyway, so we have uh, the Witchers. Witchers have heightened senses. So. As you can see here, I, I employ my Witcher sense, and that allows me to differentiate certain things from the environment. As you can see, Yennefer's clothes are, are um, they stand out, and I can examine them. <laughs> and so we can use that to, to find things in the room or the environment that are of special interest. We can go ahead and look at these objects. But alas, this is what we need. So we've gotten the key, we can unlock the door, and we can continue on further. Before we do, let's see if we can chat to Yennefer. I don't remember. This game is gorgeous. It is one of the best games I've ever seen in terms of visual and graphical fidelity. Well, let's be unreasonable. Ah. What's interesting is that some of the translations weren't exact. Uh, she never said anything about putting her face on, and uh, there's something about putting on your boots. I should have trans or I should have mentioned it as it happened, but I didn't want to interrupt any of the dialogue. So my apologies. Anyway, let's go down. What's interesting is that Kaer Morhen in the original game, the first Witcher game, starts in Kaer Morhen as well. They did a really good job of being consistent with the previous game, and the environment looks very similar. Uh, now it's a little more dilapidated. Um, 
And we have Vesemir. Geralt's father of sorts, as I have mentioned. The head of the uh, of, of Karamoran, the school of the wolf. He leads all the training. So far, there have no been no new witchers because witchers themselves are becoming more and more rare. Um, initially, they were needed. Um, there was an event uh, that happened many years ago that spawned magic. Um, it was the Cataclysm of Spheres, I believe. I don't remember the name. Um, and effectively what happened is monsters were allowed out because the, 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 the universe with monsters and our universe collided and there was some overlap. And so initially witchers were created to combat monsters. They're genetically modified human beings that are, have superhuman skill, such as, you know, strength, increased strength, increased perception and whatnot. And they were designed specifically to combat monsters. But as humans got smarter and they were able to defend themselves, witchers were needed less and less. And so now they're kind of looked at as freaks uh, in society. And we'll see how uh, society treats Geralt um, because of this, uh, because of it being that time where, where witchers aren't necessarily needed anymore. Let's not get mad at her. So Siri is being trained as a witcher, but the thing is only men can become witchers. And I'll get into that a little bit more after this cinematic. She's very skilled. She has all the agility and the, and the skill of a witcher, but she cannot possibly undergo the mutation, mutations or the, uh, the trial of the grasses. Um, simply because she's a woman and witchers are, are, can, only men can be witchers. A bit sexist, I understand, but, uh, it's the, the nature of the game, the nature of the mutations. Also, I believe three out of ten witchers survive, or boys survive the trial of the grasses, the rest die, because it's a really brutal process. They're injected with potions and other things to mutate their, uh, their genes. Here we have young Siri. Siri <laughs> is a very uh, smart girl. Ah. Sure, let's let's run it. Why not? This gives me a time to to talk about series past. Um. Whoop, 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 whoop. So Siri is uh is the daughter of Pavetta, which was the wife uh, Queen Pavetta, who was the wife or whoops, who was the uh, wife of Dunny um, of Urchin, who was a knight that. Uh, Geralt lifted a curse off of um, many years back, and uh, in the Witcher universe, or in, in in the Northern Kingdoms, there's a law called the Law of Surprise, which dictates that uh, uh, anybody who saves a man um, is then owed by that same man uh, their firstborn child. And so, as Geralt was bound, uh, or as, as Dunny was bound to Geralt by the Law of Surprise, um, he received Ciri. Um, however, Siri was raised by her grandmother uh, in Skellige, which is kind of like an island uh, away from the from the mainland, and also in uh, in Sintra, which is a region uh, kind of to the south, close to the North North Guardian border. Um, unfortunately, one time uh, there was a, the, the slaughter of Sintra happened, in which Nilfgaard invaded and many people were killed. Siri managed to run away as she was. Um, being taken by a Nilfgaardian soldier named Kahir, who later on tries to help uh, um, Geralt and his company. 
But she eventually was escaped, uh, ran into Geralt, and she was taken back to Caramorn, and that's where we are now. See? Siri's smart. Uh, I'm gonna take her back. <laughs> yes, Siri is very smart and very mischievous. But there's a lot more to her that we yet we have yet to see. What the heck, let's go, let's go through training, simply because I don't remember what mouse and keyboard controls are like. Okay, yes. I'm gonna draw my sword. Z to select the target. Fast attack. Left shift is strong attack, right? Alright, come here. Dodge is alt. Okay. And this game is tough on the hardest difficulty. Oh, I'm gonna roll now. I will admit, I had a hard time getting through it on the uh, hardest difficulty last time. I like to parry. Alright, let's do reposts. These we just have to land just before the sword hits us. I believe most enemies will have a tell. You can tell in their uh, health bar above their heads when when's the right time to hold down for a repost. And let's hold down and hold Quen. Um, Witchers have limited magic ability. Quen being uh, the shield. So I'll show you how that looks like now. So it gives us a temporary sort of defense. So we can get hit once. Um, and we can see Vesemir here as a higher form of Quen right now. Um, we can hit once, we can get hit once, and it'll protect us. Igni is another sign. This allows us to deal fire damage, as, as the game has mentioned, and shoots it right out like that. We can also stream it, but, uh, as we level up our, our sign intensity and our abilities, we're, we're able to do more with the signs. So, there we go. And now we're going to use Ard, which allows you to push that, push back enemies telekinetically, like so. It's pretty useful. It also kind of stuns them. As we can see, Vesemir is a little bit stunned. Axie is a, is a mind control technique. Very useful in the later game, especially on a harder difficulty, because you can... Uh, you can have enemies uh, be on your side. Uh, you can um, convince them that they're uh, they're fighting for you, and it makes it a lot easier. Yurden is pretty useful, um, mostly for um, for um, spirit enemies, such as ghosts, strigas, and other kind of enemies. Uh, it slows them down and allows you to damage them more. Um, oh, we'll toss a bomb. Um, and so all those signs are very useful. I think we're going to focus on on a, uh, a sign build uh, through this playthrough just because it's a little bit easier. So we'll do a mix of uh, focusing on our signs or our, our five signs here, Yurden through Ard, and our, our DPS will have a higher damage as well. But Quen and other signs are absolutely, absolutely important. So we're going to do our aiming. Okay, combat tutorial is over. Let's sheath our sword. Oh, hey, come on, Vesemir. That was uncalled for. Oh, 
We have two more uh, witchers here. We'll meet them soon enough. Eskil and Lambert. They're Geralt's friends, and uh, they're great characters as well. And, we'll see, we, and um, it's nice to see them uh, again, because they were in the original Witcher as well, and it's nice to see them back. See, this part's really interesting, and I, I'm not going to say anything till till the end, of, near the end of the cutscene. I'm sure you can imagine as to what's going to happen. Now, I've actually never been able to pinpoint who that is. It's not Siri. It's not Yennefer. It seems to be of a feminine feminine face, but I don't know any main characters that have blue eyes like that. And here we have. The Wild Hunt. The NL. The NL are a particular type of, uh, there's two, two, I guess, species of elves. There's the Anshade, which uh, are the elves that came to the mainland many, many years ago. And there's the Anel, which are the, the Wild Hunt, which come from a different universe. Um, they play an extremely pivotal role in the story of this particular game and I'm not going to go into too much detail yet because I'll spoil it but uh keep in mind that they are they are very important very integral to to what happens in this game as we try to hunt down Yennefer Might as well tell him what I dreamt of We'll meet Triss soon enough. She's another sorceress. Triss and Geralt have an interesting history, which I will get into again. Pardon me, um, as we get closer to, to meeting Triss. Otherwise, it, you, you probably forget by that point. So you can see witchers have uh, cat-like eyes, which is a part of uh, an effect of the mutations that they underwent. Siri was in his dreams, and Geralt does believe in dreams, so she's most likely in danger. Pardon me again. Let's go. Time to continue our hunt for Yennefer. So Willoughby translates a bit different into Polish. It's Wierzbice. Yennefer's trademark scent. Yes, the stuffed unicorn is a seminal aspect of the book. Let's just say it was destroyed by both of them in a way that is promiscuous. This game is still beautiful. Every time I play it, truly a beautiful game, well-optimized, fantastic 
I, this deserves as many Game of the Year awards as it got. And now we have our first taste of combat. Alright. Um, so watch me get my ass handed to me. Especially since I haven't actually um, played on this difficulty in a while. And yes, I know. There are only level 1 enemies. And I can always just use Quen. I should actually probably should use Quen. There's Quen. So ghouls are annoying because if you don't kill them fast enough, they'll regenerate all their health. So I'm trying to get through them as fast as I can. But really, this part's this part's hard to lose. Okay. Our Quen sign isn't exactly the best yet, but then again, we're a level 1 Witcher. The Quen is absolutely phenomenal later on. It says, saved my ass more times than I can say. Um, I also like to level up Igni because you can get a Melt Armor stat for it later, uh, which is very useful when you have uh, enemies that are just tough to take down. Anyway, so we can... There's Adrenaline Points, and I'll just read that for you guys. I should probably read a little bit of the tutorial for the people who aren't actually planning on playing through the game. So Adrenaline Points are important because the more we hit an enemy, the more we generate Adrenaline Points, and then that certain abilities that we can unlock later on allowed us to perform special attacks, such as finishers and one-shot kills, um, but in light... Uh, but they would consume the adrenaline points that we have available. Um, and as we're not in combat, they're going to disappear. So they don't. we can't just level them up or build them up, attacking a certain group of enemies, move over to the next group of enemies, and then unleash our one-hit kill. It has to be used in that combat situation. Uh, vitality just regenerates. However, since we're playing on the hardest difficulty, uh, there is no vitality regeneration through meditation or other things. Unfortunately, I can only uh, meditate. Um, uh, sorry, I can only uh, use uh, consumables to heal. So that's what makes this part very difficult. And I always have to carry a bunch of food um, for that particular reason. So I'll just go ahead and uh, consume some food there to bring up our vitality. And let's jump onto Roach. Roach is Geralt's uh, trusty horse. Look at this. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And so we'll just go ahead and follow Vesemir and uh, head to the inn. But, you know what? I think there's a lot of information that we've uh, taken in so far. Um, I hope you're enjoying the, the, the series so far. I mean, this is the first episode, and, and I'm, I, regardless of how this goes, I'm really excited to play through it again. Um, I'm going to end this episode here, and we'll pick it up uh, from here next time. So thanks for tuning in. I hope uh, you all are enjoying this. If you like it, please let, let me know what I'm doing well in the comments, and please let me know what I can improve on in the comments. And uh, I'm QED20, and I'll see you guys next time.